now. Good afternoon. My name is Leslie McNabb and I'm here with Christina Fryho, Lily Henricks, Coco Rios, Laura Yee, and Marisol Aguilar, representing the Library, Parks and Recreation, and Human Resources Departments in the City of San Diego. We are here today to talk about the South Bay Civic Engagement Pilot Program, which began in October 2019. Due to COVID-19, the program was on hiatus for a year, but we have relaunched it virtually. We will be discussing the program goals, outcomes, and plans, and explaining how we started a virtual volunteer program. There is a handout that accompanies this presentation with concrete examples and tips. In 2015, as many as 18% of San Diego youth were classified as disconnected, meaning that they were neither in school nor employed. This challenge became a new focus of the city of San Diego. And since 2017, the city's mission to reconnect the young people to the community has been widely successful. Projections for the end of this year see the rate of disconnected youth nearly halved compared to a decade ago. Despite this progress, there are still San Diego neighborhoods who haven't yet seen the benefits. South Bay is one of these communities and one of the few examples of neighborhoods that have seen a rise in youth disconnection. The yellow line in the graph is the South Bay and the blue line is the entire county of San Diego. We believe that civic engagement is the first step in reversing the disconnection trend. By giving citizens a part, building up their neighborhood, we can show residents that the community and its resources are both there for them to use and their responsibility to maintain. In addition, volunteer and mentor programs give young people the skills and experience they need to start a rewarding professional or academic future. Beyond simply expanding the programs we already have, this pilot program is also focused on expanding accessibility to Spanish speaking residents. Most South Bay residents are Latinx, and so it is important to engage the area in a way that accommodates and celebrates that identity. This program was accomplished with three departments in the city of San Diego and the nonprofits San Diego Workforce Partnership and Libros. Libros, which is the local chapter of Reforma, is dedicated to the improvement of all library and information services to the growing number of Chicano Latinos and Spanish speaking people in San Diego County. The San Diego Workforce Partnership in collaboration with the city of San Diego offered paid mentorships to disconnected youth with an outreach focus in the South Bay. Outreach was targeted through social media, schools, teen councils and the local libraries and recreation centers and through features with Univision and the San Diego Union Tribune. The group focused on Spanish language translations of the volunteer application and flyers for programs. One feature of the program was the Trash to Art event, a collaboration with Libros in February, 2020. Nearly 100 students from local schools picked up trash around the Robert Egger Senior South Bay Recreation Center. The theme of the cleanup was reducing single use plastics. Students were given a plastic water bottle at the beginning of the event which most students used for their art project. They colored the water bottles with Sharpies and cut them into spirals to resemble glass sculptures made by Dale Chihuly. The cleanup art workshop and collaboration with the city were part of a larger project called Book to Action. The statewide project is an initiative to help librarians develop civic engagement activities related to a book of their choosing. The book selected was Album of Fences by Tijuana author Omar Pimienta and translated by Jose Antonio Villarón. Pimienta's book documents life along the US-Mexico border through the use of poetry and photos of his family. Our pilot program was very successful. Between October 2019 and today, there has been a 535% growth in volunteers that live in the South Bay and a 1,631% growth in volunteers that serve in the South Bay. In October, 2019, we asked volunteers to identify in the volunteer application if they speak Spanish as a first language. And since then, 243 volunteers have been added to the city of San Diego. 
Manatees that live in the South Bay have increased by 158%. While this is still a gain, we plan to increase outreach in this area. Future plans for this program include a virtual job fair called Connecting to Public Service in the South Bay and a virtual family day featuring resources in the South Bay. Now my colleagues from the library and parks and recreation departments will talk about how the goals were implemented there. We will start with Lily Henricks with the San Ysidro Library, then Coco Rios and Laura Yi with the Otay Mesa Nestor Library, and finally Marisol Aguilar, volunteer coordinator with Parks and Recreation. Christina Freiho with Human Resources will conclude the presentation by speaking about our virtual volunteer program. Hi, I'm Lily Henricks from the San Ysidro Library. I'm the Youth Services Librarian here. The new San Ysidro Library opened its doors at 4235 Bayer Boulevard on September 9th, 2019, after 30 years in the making and with much community input. Although it's now one and a half years old, the library was only open to full capacity for just six months before everything shut down in March of 2020 because of COVID-19. We returned to work in April, but remained closed to the public. In May, the San Ysidro Library, one of 11 libraries, opened to curbside service for existing holds. Contactless pickup service was provided Monday through Friday, and in June, new hold requests were also added. In July, book drops reopened for patrons to finally return their long-held materials, and books were quarantined before being processed. In September, virtual homework help became available from our site with the Do Your Homework at the Library tutor instructors. In October, the San Ysidro Library finally opened to in-person library services as one of 12 SDPL branches offering limited services and one of 10 libraries offering an outdoor patio lab to check out laptops as part of the San Diego Access for All program. Patrons can pick up holds, use a desktop computer for an hour, request books, and print or make 10 copies for free with a library card. The Patio Lab has been steadily growing and is very well utilized. Students and patrons alike appreciate an open, safe, and clean study space that follows the CDC guidelines and access to laptop computers or to use their own devices for two hours of free Wi-Fi. Other outdoor community needs include notary use and extended two hours of computer time. The San Ysidro Library also became a mail ballot drop-off location for a month before the November election, where we were able to help multitudes of citizens cast their ballot and participate in the vote. It's been almost six months since we've been opened to, to a limited capacity of eight patrons at 25%, and volunteers have not been allowed to participate yet. At this moment, we have an exceptional teen volunteer who is ready to start a computer basics workshop for adults back in March of last year. During this time, she has completely transformed her workshop into a virtual computer basics course, and we are so excited for her return to implement this exciting program, an ideal opportunity to benefit our community. During the pandemic, Library Next Level Access, sponsored by the San Diego Public Library Foundation, has incredibly served the South Bay community by providing over 100 laptops, about 41% of computers to kids, to our own San Ysidro students. This has been a, much, a major effort and crew to get this much needed resource into the hands of our kids to assist their distance learning and to close the digital divide. These free refurbished laptops are an upgrade from school Chromebooks and they also receive one year of extra tech support. It's the most rewarding thing to witness their proud excitement as students receive their very own laptop. This has been by far the most successful program that has benefited our families and student community during these uncertain times. Before we were closed, our new Idea Maker Lab space was being manned by an outstanding volunteer who is also a valued South Bay resident who just wants to give back to his beloved community. His hands-on Maker, the movie screening program, was a great hit with the community. 
Another talented San Ysidro student teacher volunteered her time to offer a bilingual story time on Friday mornings. The Girl Scouts of San Ysidro even provided a weekly book and craft program for the children of the San Ysidro Library on Saturday mornings. These programs specifically tailored to the needs of vulnerable Latinx and immigrant groups. For two years, the San Ysidro Library hosted a family night book giveaway sponsored by Book Rich Environments, a program of the National Book Foundation and the San Diego Housing Commission. At our last event, over 500 kids and their families showed up and we successfully gave out almost 2000 books. These community programs and partnerships with resources is an example of ways to increase civic engagement in our San Ysidro community. We do intentionally gear our library programming towards families with huge turnout special events, such as our back to school Hogwarts party in the fall, Dia de los Muertos Remember Me Fiesta, Holiday Elf Party, and Alice in Wonderland Tea Party in the spring. Here is where our mentees have especially been an invaluable force. Popular monthly family events also include Storybox Theater, Family Movie Nights, and Lego Creators Club. As part of the South Bay Civic Engagement Pilot Program and through the Internship and Work Readiness Program, providing early volunteer and work experience, our teen mentees gain basic career skills such as phone etiquette, basic data entry, filing and word processing, verbal and written communication, along with teamwork. A couple of our mentees have even gone on to be hired through the, through the library and or parks and rec departments. Through Facebook of the STPL Virtual Hub and San Ysidro Library Facebook page, our branch has been providing two thematic bilingual story times each month since last June to maintain civic engagement in a virtual environment through social media. Bilingual story time with Mrs. Claudia and story time with Senor Sean have an avid loyal following. Mrs. Claudia also provides Zoom story time for local community groups, including charter schools and neighborhood head starts. We're also in the process of creating videos for the Idea Lab and another for Spanish book reviews. Other virtual program ideas include book clubs, take and make steam projects, virtual games, and virtual cooking classes. In January of 2021, Mayor Todd Gloria delivered his inaugural State of the City Address from the San Ysidro Library as the 37th Mayor of San Diego in an unprecedented virtual event. The San Ysidro Library has survived the crazy pandemic year of 2020 and continues to thrive as one of the few in-person library service support for the South Bay community. We are proud and privileged to be doing this and hope to continue expanding our services to offer much, much more. Thank you. Hi, my name is Coco Rios Fidel and I manage the library, Otay Mesa Library, located at 3003 Coronado Avenue approximately four miles from the Mexican border. We are engaged actively working and creating and supporting strong community in the South Bay, serving a large diverse community, which includes approximately 50 schools and after school programs. Teamwork among library staff, volunteers, mentees, and interns is crucial to the library's operations and goals please visit our Facebook at Otay Mesa Library. As an important community space, we have made outreach and fostering community partnerships a high priority to ensure community members know what kinds of resources and events are in their area. Working with local schools, educators and establishments Staff hosts library visits and tours, as well as participate in school and community events, such as Dia de los Niños, Read Across America, National Night Out, and um, the San Diego Police Department's annual open house. The library also supports events held by other community organizations. We're fortunate to be partnered with the Oglo Theater 
which uh, sponsors Globe for All. It's a wonderful program that we host here at the library. The South Bay Community Services and Spay Neuter Action Project, also known as SNAP. By partnering with community organizations, the library can offer programs to meet the needs and wants of the community. Following the San Diego Public Library's philosophy of creating programs that address the needs and wants of the community, our library offers a variety of programs for all ages advertised in English and Spanish. One of the largest annual events is our How To Festival, in which we utilize many volunteers to assist us and allows community members to showcase their talents by teaching participants how to do something. We also offer Spanish only uh, programs. Pictured is our art therapy class, a partnership we have with Southwestern College as a satellite site here, currently being offered virtually. We have a large pool of volunteers. While the majority are teenagers, there's also adult volunteers. A few volunteers have gotten jobs via the city of San Diego and other local cities. Some teen volunteers are members of the library's large and active teen council. Pre-COVID, they would meet here once a week to fundraise and support the library as well as plan and host their own programs. Due to the pandemic, they now meet virtually. Over the years, the Otay Mesa Library has been an active participant in mentoring local youth. Prior to the city's internship and work readiness program, our branch worked with Hire a Youth Program for several summers to help foster homeless youth gain work experience. Since the inception of the internship and work readiness program, the library has had several mentees and interns at least three teen council members have become paid mentees. One of the library's previous mentee was hired as a library assistant too at the Logan Heights branch. And, current, and a current mentee was featured in a segment about the internship and work readiness program on Univision. I will pause here to introduce my youth services librarian, Lori. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Yee. I'm the Youth Services Librarian at Otay Mesa Nestor Library. And currently we offer limited services at the library. Similar to San Ysidro, we, off, we are a San Diego Access for All site. Uh, in our outdoor computer area, our community can borrow a Chromebook for two hours or use our free Wi-Fi. We also have our phone services where patrons can call us to resolve their account issues and also use or find, learn how to use and, or find local or online resources. And our bookshop is open 24 hours a day. Our outreach activities have also moved online. We have been staying in touch with our local organizations and sharing each other's services and resources to our communities. We also continue to stay active with our schools by keeping them informed of library and community events, services, and opportunities by email and peach jar. And we have also been offering virtual and classroom visits, which include library photo tours, as well as introductions to the library's online resources. And during the summer of 2020, a colleague also connected us with the Laurel Foundation in LA, where we had, a, where we had the opportunity to participate in their summer reading or summer camp program. Our programs have also moved to the virtual format. Um, our programs are offered in English and Spanish and are available for all ages. They're all hosted on Otay Mesa's Facebook page, but we also have many programs on the San Diego Public Library's virtual hub and several on the SDPL teen Instagram. We have a robust schedule of programs, which include 
book talks, staff reads, story times, arts and crafts, origami, cooking, STEAM projects, and coming soon, homeschooling. Additionally, similar to San Ysidro Library, we host a number of Library Next programs, as well as the Library Next Next Level Access. All our programs are created by staff. We look forward to having to a time when we can welcome back our volunteers, mentees, and interns. Back to the library. As for our teen council, although they have been unable to physically meet, they have been keeping in touch um, with each other and Otai Mesa's library staff coordinators online. Um, and many of them have been working on projects at home, such as creating cards and decorating bags for the Jacobs Heart Children's Cancer Support Services, as well as preparing craft kits to accompany our virtual programs. Looking ahead to the future, we plan to connect with more local organizations and reach new audiences, create and host more programs to meet community needs, such as job search resources, and continue to seek and foster more volunteers, mentees, and interns. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marisol Aguilar and I'm the volunteer coordinator for the City of San Diego's Parks and Recreation Department. The Parks and Recreation Department oversees over 42,000 acres of developed and undeveloped parkland and we rely on community members to assist us to uh, to assist us and take ownership of their neighborhood parks and open spaces. We offer many services and programs, um, including recreational opportunities such as recreation centers, neighborhood parks, joint use facilities with our neighborhood school districts, specialized programs, aquatics, golf courses therapeutic recreation services, age well services, which is geared towards senior citizens over the age of 55, open spaces, developed regional parks, and of course, our beaches. Some of the recreation opportunities that we offer in the South Bay are offered out of recreation centers, such as Robert Egger, South Bay Community Center, Cesar Chavez Community Center, San Ysidro Community Activity Center. We also have a very large open space in South Bay. It's Otay Valley Regional Park. We have a pool, Vista Terrace, and then we offer many programs. Three of our very popular ones are our Winter Wonderland in the, in the winter, our Day of the Child in the spring, and then of course our Summer Lunch Program. Given that we offer many recreational opportunities, we also offer a variety of uh, volunteer opportunities for both individuals and groups. Before the pandemic, we partnered with businesses, schools, military groups, nonprofits, and other organizations throughout San Diego. During the pandemic, we have had to rethink volunteers and their participation within our organization. In the beginning, we were keeping in contact with our volunteers and keeping them updated on any pandemic progress. Once we realized that we would not be able to come back, we started planning ahead. We began to brainstorm with other departments and we're still in the process of phasing back our volunteers, mentees and interns. We began with our mentees and interns. We brought them on in a completely virtual capacity. They were interviewed, trained, and supervised using programs, new programs, and technology. And we are now bringing back our volunteers in that capacity as well. Specifically, our recreation program volunteers to assist us with engaging our community members to participate in specialized programs, such as virtual yoga, art class, and many more. They're assisting with signing up. Uh, they're also assisting, um, the virtual volunteers are also assisting with the technical side of the recreational program.
they're, they're assisting participants with signing up, logging in, answering questions during class, and of course, with any technical issues that occur. This has given us the opportunity to engage all community members, including those in the South Bay, who have many talents, including the ability to share um, specifically their bilingual talents. An example of a virtual program is our virtual yoga instructor, who is seen here on the screen. She typically teaches out of San Ysidro Community Activity Center. This program is geared towards older adults and can now be attended by any older adult um, in the greater San Diego area. Moving forward, we are looking at contactless volunteer opportunities. We will invite our volunteers to come back into our parks as the CDC regulations allow. However, they will come back independently. The entire process, including the training, will be completed online. And uh, they will be assisting with litter abatement and other things that they would be able to do on their own. For more information, you can always visit san diego.gov and search Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you. So how did we come up with a uh, virtual opportunity? Um, as you would with any volunteer opportunity, you look at your need. And as the pandemic uh, arrived, we realized that our needs have changed. Um, there was a lot more reliance on uh, technology and there are a lot of people in the city of San Diego, especially those in the South Bay, who didn't have maybe all those resources needed to utilize technology to find information. So we created what we call a social calls program where we placed volunteers in a position where they could call community members and find out if they were able to um, access information they needed at the time. Um, we identified uh, our South Bay because we knew a lot of those residents um, were also Spanish speakers and sourced our volunteers um, that had that special skill in order to uh, assist with providing information on a phone um, in, in, a, in, our, in a Spanish language. Um, we also sourced volunteers that had already uh, worked with us in a different capacity. As we created the opportunity, we identified where we would need help, um, what skills the volunteer might need or experience, um, and how often we'd like to have them support uh, this project, this social call program. So once we sourced our, our volunteers I, and identified uh, people that had technology, um, uh, they had the ability to uh, make phone calls and, and help us build that program, we um, uh, spent time transferring our in-person vetting process, uh, such as our interviewing and our onboarding um, and our training of volunteers into a virtual setting. Uh, utilizing our volunteer management software. Um, we allowed uh, a time for us to um, upload those documents, um, provide the documents to new volunteers, and, and our communication was all done virtually from our interviews to our placements to our training. Um, typically, when we onboard our interns, um, we gather them and walk through site orientation, uh, we let them know a little bit about um, how they fit in the bigger picture. And we've moved now to a place where we do that uh, via Zoom or via Teams, um, practicing and embracing the use of technology has afforded us some great conversations and uh, amazing ways to get to know people and find appropriate matches for not only um, our social calls program, but for other uh, virtual opportunities that you are, that you've heard a little bit about um, as it relates to our library and our park and rec department. Um, we always spend at least a week making sure that our volunteers are comfortable um, with the information that they've been given to do the thing that we're asking them to do. 
Um, and so we have a lot of pre-recorded trainings that we did on Zoom uh, that we send to them to help them understand their role and the larger picture of where they're serving and supporting us. Um, we provide them project tasks and we ensure we have ongoing communication with those individuals, um, sometimes multiple times a week. So our virtual volunteers are still feeling um, that connection and that constant exchange of information and um, support uh, as they support us in, in various projects. Um, after we have a volunteer leave us, we make sure as we would if they were in person that we get feedback from them. And we find that especially critical now that we're in a virtual environment so that we know ways that we can provide a more efficient either onboarding or management process for those individuals helping us in a virtual environment. Um, we do an exit interview. We, um, uh, we want to ensure that they know the impact that they make. Uh, being in person, you tend to see a little bit more uh, of the impact that you make. Virtually, it's not quite as tangible. So being able to gather information around how those individuals helping us in a virtual environment, how the, what the impact is to our services, to our programs, to our community, and to the city um, is really uh, something that we're em embracing and working to um, identify and share so that individuals can see the impact that they make. Um, there's always gonna be obstacles to any um, volunteer opportunity that you may believe is the best uh, idea or possibility for your program. And um, specifically right now, technology, people's ability to use technology, being able to train people in technology, um, inconsistent access and skills when using technology, we found are, are some of the challenges. But really almost bigger than that is um, having people embrace this idea of reimagining what, uh, uh, what a volunteer can do to support our programs and services. So we, um, we encourage all, all of you to spend some time um, really thinking about ways that uh, people can connect and engage in, in, in this new uh, platform that we find ourselves that we find ourselves in. And we wish you all the success um, and look forward to uh, finding more of our own successes here in the city of San Diego. Thank you, everyone. Please feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions. We will be available for a Q&A session directly following this. I'm just going to share our contact information here. That's for three of us. and the remaining. Thank you so much. And we are here for questions.